Hello friends, in uh, today's lecture, we'll talk about another topic from pediatric surgery that is abdominal wall defects. Three most important defects what we talk about are gastroschisis, omphalocele and congenital hernia including hydrocele. And these are the three very important topics very frequently asked in your exams. So first is gastroschisis, right? Gastroschisis is the most common anomaly in babies born to mothers less than 20 years of age. That means young mothers. So babies are prone to develop this congenital anomaly. The defect is due to the in utero rupture of umbilical membrane. That's the reason why gastroschisis develops. Now this is very, very important. The placement of defect in the abdomen. It is usually lateral on the right side of the umbilical cord and approximately 4 cm. The defect in uh, omphalocele, we will talk later, it is central in abdomen and it is usually more than 4. So, that is a difference between gastroschisis and omphalocele, right? So, bowel is the most common organ that herniates and that is another point of difference with omphalocele. In gastroschisis, the herniated bowel is not covered with anything, any membranous sac or any skin, it is just lying open. I will show you the pictures. So, two points you must remember, defect is right of the umbilical cord approximately 4 cm or less in size, not covered with sac or skin. So, that is a picture, very classical. You can see that is a defect, the bowel coming out and lying outside, exposed to the environment. So, that is a picture. So, no covering, right? And defect is lateral to the umbilicus, mostly on the right side of the umbilical cord. Now, there are lots of, because bowel is lying open and herniated, there are lots of other associated bowel changes with gastroschisis. Uh, bowel is usually found non-rotated, shortened and it has not undergone complete mesenteric rotation and fixation till now. That is why these babies are prone for mesenteric volvulus and that can lead to intestinal ischemia and gangrene. The Concomitant congenital anomalies in gastroschisis are rare, only less than 10 percent. So, gastroschisis is an isolated anomaly, not very frequently associated with other congenital anomalies. That is again a point of difference with omphalocele, where the risk of other congenital anomalies is very high, more than 50-60 percent. We will talk later. Some infants though can have intestinal atresia and undescended testes may be an associated congenital anomaly in boys. Okay, now the management of gastroschisis that depends on the size of the defect, the condition of the bowel. So, these are the three procedures what we talk about. So, one, two and three. One is easy primary closer. Obviously, primary closer is possible when the defect is small. So, when the defect is small, reduce the bowel inside and close the fascia and skin of the anterior abdominal wall. Let me show you the picture. So, that is a picture of gastroschisis. So, you first reduce the contents and then do a closer of the anterior abdominal wall. Very simple primary closer. When the defect is large, obviously, then the primary closer is difficult. In those situations, the second option is prosthetic patch closer. We can put a prosthetic patch and we can close just the skin over it. And the most commonly used patch is uh, commercially known as Goretex patch. This is made of PTFE, it is a biomaterial that is polytetrafluoroethylene, right? So, it, because it causes minimal tissue reaction. So, uh, let me show you the picture for better understanding. So, that is a large defect you can see and this white structure is the patch, Goretex patch. So, this white is the patch that is placed, then over the patch we just close the skin, right? Fascia you do not need to close because we have covered the defect with the patch. So, that is a patch repair. Third is if the defect is white and reduction of the bowel is not possible, 
right? The bowel may be edematous, thickened. So, reduction of the bowel is not possible. In that case, what to do? Bowel is exposed. So, what we do is we cover the bowel with a plastic or silastic bag that is called silo. So, you must remember this term silo. Silo is, let me tell you what is silo. It's a hand swing or ready-made plastic or silastic bag which is attached to the abdominal wall covering the bowel. Let me show you the picture. So, that's a bag. So, image based question also can be asked. So, this is a silo reduction. So, entire bowel is covered with this silo bag and every 12 to uh, 24 hours we keep on tightening the bag. Keep on tightening the bag. So, bowel will gradually and slowly go inside. And within 5 to 7 days, mostly, we will be able to achieve the complete reduction. And once that is achieved, then we can do a secondary wall closer, defect closer. So, that is a silo reduction, right. So, if viscera cannot be reduced, silo is placed. It can be placed bedside also. Intestines are reduced sequentially over a period of 5 to 7 days, followed by facial closer right so that's a silo the prognosis is good but occasionally if gut dysmotility is there it can delay the recovery period so that's a primary repair patch repair and the silo reduction technique of achieving management of the gastroschisis now as i told you some patients of gastroschisis particularly boys can have associated undescended testes so if the testes is along with the bowel testis is also lying outside the abdominal cavity or coelomic cavity. So, like we did the reduction for uh, bowel, so in a similar manner we put, we place the testis back into the abdominal cavity and close the abdomen, then wait for spontaneous descent to happen. If that does not happen, then later we can do an orchidopexy to place the testes back into the scrotum. So, that is about gastroschisis. Now, we move on to the next similar condition that is omphalocele, occasionally also known as exomphalos. The defect here is funnel shape more than 4 cm and central. So, that is a point of difference. In gastroschisis, it was less than 4 cm and right of the umbilicus, but here the defect is central. Another point of difference, in gastroschisis the bowel was not covered, but here the bowel is covered, the herniated viscera are covered with a membranous sac, not skin, devoid of skin, right? But it is a membranous sac covering the herniated content. Let me show you the picture first, so you can see that is a covering that is uh, you cannot see the bowel here because it is covered with the sac, membranous sac and this membranous sac is composed of two layers, outer layer of amnion and inner layer of peritoneum, right. If the defect is less than 4 cm, then it is sometimes labeled as hernia of the cord because defect here is central. So, it is basically herniation into the cord the bowel enters through the base of the umbilical cord. So, viscera protrude into the base of the umbilical cord, whereas in gastroschisis it was right side. So, cord was separate, the herniation was separate, but here it is into the base of the cord because of which the umbilical vessels will be splayed over the viscera or they will be pushed to the one side. In very large defects in omphalocele, even liver and spleen may be herniated. So, that is another point of difference with gastroschisis. In gastroschisis, because the defects are usually small, so you will rarely see a liver or spleen coming out. It is mainly the bowel, but in omphalocele, the defects are huge. So, even the liver and viscera may be herniated. So, that is another point of difference compared to gastroschisis. In gastroschisis, I told you kids have only around 10 percent kids have associated congenital anomalies, but in omphalocele, the risk is quite high. More than half of the patients born with omphalocele, they have concomitant 
congenital anomalies. So this is the list that may be asked in the common ones. Back with Wiedemann syndrome, all of you know, you have read in uh, urology. And uh, the chromosomal abnormalities like trisomies of 13, 15, 18 and 21 chromosomes. Other anomalies associated with omphalocele may be exostrophy of the bladder or cloaca, pentology of you can tell you must be knowing it's basically a cluster of uh, midline uh, birth defects. It includes omphalocele, congenital uh, diaphragmatic hernia, mainly the anterior one, the morgagni type, sternal cleft. These are the common features of pentology of cantrell. Ectopia cordis may be associated, cardiac defects like ventricular septal defect may be associated with omphalocele. Management is more or less similar to gastroschisis, the same techniques except one or two other methods. So first is preservation of the sac, you never open the sac because that is helping in preventing injury to the bowel and keeping the bowel intact. So keep it moistened with the saline gauze or transparent bowel bag. So that is the first same if the defect is small or medium size. So we can do a primary closer. If the defect is big, then the same prosthetic patch repair like we discussed in gastroschisis, the PTFE patch that is Goretex patch. Also we can use porcine subintestinal submucosa derived biomaterial like surgices. We can do a skin flap closer and placement of silo same as gastroschisis if the defect is too big and reduction is not achievable directly. So we can do a silo bag reduction with subsequent staged facial closure. This is another different technique for omphalocele not used for gastroschisis because gastroschisis bowel is exposed so we cannot use any chemical there. So here but in giant omphaloceles we can use topical application of ascarotic agents they form scars means thickening right so the agents chemicals commonly used are povidone iodine like betadine ointment marbromine that is mercurochrome and so these are the ointments that can be applied over the uh, sac of omphalocele it leads to thickening of the sac and gradually epithelization and closure of the defect so that's the advantage with ascarotic agent. So this is the management of omphalocele. So in the end just to summarize the major defects in omphalocele the defect is uh, central through the umbilical ring and it is more than 4 cm whereas in gastroschisis defect is lateral that means right of the umbilical cord less than or equal to 4 cm. In omphalocele the herniated contents are covered with a membranous sac Whereas in gastroschisis, there is no covering, the herniated viscera are exposed. And in omphalocele, additionally, we can see liver or spleen herniation that does not happen in gastroschisis. And in omphalocele, there is 50 to 60 percent risk of associated congenital anomalies, whereas it is less than 10 percent in gastroschisis.